Hey, Phil here with another personal finance video. A while back, I put out a video about how to retire early and one that explained the 4% rule. I'll link to them in the description below. They got really popular and it sparked a lot of great discussion. And it's been a while since I've posted a personal finance video. There just hasn't been a topic that interested me enough to create a video. But I recently saw an article, actually my wife shared an article with me, about 11 things to do in your 20s to become a millionaire by the time you're 30. So I wanted to run through the list of 11, which was on businessinsider.com. I'll also link to that article below. And just kind of talk about them, share my opinion about them, and see how I'm doing with them. And wait just a second, before you hit the dislike button or leave a nasty comment, I know a lot of people are gonna be like, hey, this guy's a fraud because he doesn't know what he's talking about. He's not a millionaire and he's trying to give this advice. I get it, that's not the purpose of this video. What I'm trying to do is look at this article's list and just really for myself, compare how my path is going. What am I doing to become a millionaire by the time I'm 30? Will I become a millionaire? I'm not sure, I'm on the path. I've got a couple more years to get there. It's actually my birthday in a few days. I will say, just to give you a little bit of insight, that I have sold over a million dollars in products and services. And my main business is teaching and selling online courses. I do a lot of video editing and video work. And while I haven't made a million dollars in profit yet, I am on that path. Let's get straight to the list, the 11 things to do in your 20s to become a millionaire by the time you're 30. Number one is to focus on earning. It's really difficult to become a millionaire by the time you're 30 if you just have a typical job, pay to check to paycheck, and you're not advancing your career and not advancing your earnings. If I started out with the same job that I got out of college and I got my yearly bonus, if I got a yearly bonus, I would definitely not be a millionaire by the time I'm 30. Well, this is easier said than done. It's easy to say, well, to become a millionaire, you have to make more money. You have to get a higher paying job, duh. Well, that's easy to say. What's harder to do is actually follow that path. When you're at a job, look for ways to get bonuses. Ask for raises. I remember asking for my first raise. It was tough. It was at the end of my first year contract at a job and we were going into my second year. I had realized that the work that I was doing was not, it was actually more than the expectations. And so I went to them and said, because they had offered me a second year at the same salary and I said, hey, like I would love working here, but I'm doing a lot more than is expected than of me. And so I think I should be making this much. And actually they ended up meeting me right where my asking price was. So it just takes asking. But this first tip about making more money, I think is definitely true. You have to make more money than typical to be a millionaire when you're 30. This does go against a little bit of what I've taught in the past about retiring early. In the US, with a typical family, if you do have a family, I believe you will need more than a million dollars to retire early so that you can live off of that income. And it's possible to earn that by the time you are 35, 40, 45, without having a 1% job. You just have to be smart about saving, using credit wisely, taking out loans, living simply. Let's move on to their second tip, which is to develop multiple streams of income. And I think this is actually the very most important tip from them, and it's the thing that I'm doing the best right now. I have a business of teaching online, but I also do video editing. I also have my stocks. I also, in within my business of teaching online, I have a YouTube channel that has some earnings. I sell Amazon books. I put my videos on all kinds of platforms. So literally every month, I'll have 20, 30 sources of income. Now that's a little bit extreme. They talk about in the article how three seems to be the magic number. And this could be anything from your job to real estate, rental income, investments, stocks, bonds, dividends. And I think this is actually one of the best ways to increase your earnings, going back to tip number one. Because if you're at a job, there's only so many bonuses and only so many times you can move up in the ladder at your workplace in a short amount of time. So developing another stream of income is important. And we'll talk more about starting a business, which is one of the best ways to do that in another tip. 
Tip number three is to save to invest and not save to save. And I love the quote that they shared from Grant Cardone, who is an internet marketer who's made a ton of money. He talks about living simply and really living broke while you are saving. You don't wanna save and just put a ton of money into a savings account because it's just sitting there and with inflation, it's actually losing value. Rather, you want to save and practically, I mean, his is pretty extreme, putting all your savings into investments and living as if you were paycheck to paycheck. Yes, that's one way to do it. And if you're investing in non-retirement accounts where you can't take it out early, then it's okay to kind of invest. And if there is an emergency, you can take it out. Now, some people are gonna you know, holler at me and say that's a terrible idea because if the markets fluctuate it's, and you shouldn't use your investments as short-term saving. And actually, that's what this is saying is that you shouldn't invest or you shouldn't save and invest thinking that you can take it out whenever. You gotta think about it as just sticking in there. And for the first couple of years, it's going to be hard to see the growth of that income. But from my experience with learning from other people who are older and wiser than me, I know that it's those after those 10, 15, 20 years where you look back at your investments and you think, wow, I am glad I started investing early because in the beginning I didn't think it was doing much, but now after 10, 20 years, these investments are really paying off and growing at a rapid rate. So the best ways to get started with this is simply just if you have a work if you're at work and you have a 401k account, start contributing to that, especially up to your employer match. Then you can use your Roth IRA or a traditional IRA depending on your income to invest. And lastly, if you filled up all of your tax-friendly retirement accounts through work and through IRAs, you can actually invest in low-cost index funds. And this is what millionaire or billionaire Warren Buffett suggests. Not trying to play the market, invest in individual stocks, but low cost index funds. And the last tip that they give you in the article, which I love, is just to do it automatically. Contribute every month and think of this money as, well, this is just not money you have. You will learn to live with it. If you cut off even just an extra $100 or $50 or $500 if you can from the top of your paycheck every month and you invest it, you'll learn to live without it. Tip number four is to be decisive. I thought this was a really interesting one. It's talking about how, and they've done some research, Napoleon Hill did a big study about it, and he found that most millionaires, they make decisions quickly. They don't get stuck weighing the pros and cons and taking days or weeks to make a decision. They make decisions quickly and they talk about making decisions that you can reverse easily. So if you made the wrong decision, you can pivot backwards or pivot another direction. So this can be everything from what you decide to eat in the morning, having a simple breakfast every morning lined up so you don't have to waste any time figuring out what you're gonna eat. Same with lunch or dinner. If you, just, if you think about how much time you spend figuring out what am I gonna eat for lunch or what am I gonna wear each day? This is why people like Steve Jobs wore very simple clothes so that they didn't have to spend any of their mental energy making a not so important decision and they could spend their mental energy making important decisions like how do they advance their career? How can they run their business better? How can they make more money? Tip number five is to don't show off, show up. And I think this is a very important one. I know a lot of people that out of college, once they started making a little bit of money, they bought their fancy phone, they bought their fancy car. A lot of times they had the payment plan or they took out a loan to get their car a new car, and that is just something you can't do if you want to be a millionaire by the time you're 30. Unless you're just making, you know, three, four hundred thousand dollars a year, you can't be spending money like that. You gotta show up. And this is where I, for me, they didn't really talk about this, but what this means for me is being consistent and sticking with what you do. All of my friends who are successful right now stick with what they do. They wanted to be a cinematographer and every year and every month after school, that's what they focused on. They wanted to be whatever, they stuck with it. And for me, that's what I found, that my success hasn't come rapidly. It's not a viral success. It's just been from showing up every day, every week, and every month and doing the work. 
As a business owner myself, as an entrepreneur, I have to show up every day to work at my home office <laughs> because there's no one else that's going to do the work and there's no one that is going to tell me to do the work. So I have to do it myself. So this tip is kind of two twofold. One is to don't show off. I still drive a 2008 Hyundai Accent. It's a very simple car. I remember listening to Car Talk on NPR. I don't know if you listened to ever listened to that show, but it's these two guys who just give car advice and they were making a joke about the least impressive car if you were trying to impress girls. And it was the Hyundai, I think, uh, Elantra. Well, I have the mini me version of the Hyundai Elantra, the Hyundai Accent. It's like the less impressive car. And it's a 2008 used, I bought it in cash, but it runs and it gets me from A to B and I love it. it his name is Axel, he gets me everywhere. So anyways, I am not someone to show off. I show up though and I think that's a great piece of advice. Number six is to change your mindset about money. And this one was a little bit, iffy. I was, I thought like, okay, they just threw in this extra tip just to have another tip. But really what I think they're getting at is that wealthy people think about wealth and money as a possibility. It's harder to become a millionaire and it's harder to become wealthy if you think it's out of your reach. If you're coming at the perspective of, I'll never be rich, I'll never be a millionaire. And I, I completely know and I understand how hard that can be. Because when we live in a society that is completely unbalanced, we got the 1% that has so much of the wealth and the 99% that has so little of the wealth, I know how hard it can be to imagine being part of the 1% or not even with the 1% because that's not, I don't even think that's a really good goal. That's not a goal of mine. I don't want to be the 1%. But I understand how hard it is to think, oh, I can be wealthy. When I graduated from college, I will say, I'll be completely honest, I was in a ton of debt. Over $107,000 in student loan debt to, to my name or at least that I had to pay off that my parents helped me take out loans for. I never thought I was gonna pay that off. I never thought that I was gonna get out of that hole and be able to build wealth. But that changed as I started to build my business, as I started to see that I could actually make a lot more money with my own business and I could actually see or foresee paying off my loans. And it took me a couple or a few years to do it, which is really unbelievable, a lot faster than I ever imagined. But it was a mindset change of thinking, I'm never gonna do, be able to do this. I, I just have to deal with it. I'm just gonna pay off my loans, my credit card bill, whatever it is, every month and just that's what it's gonna be like to no, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna pay off my loan and putting every extra penny into that loan or every extra ounce every hour to doing something to build a little bit more wealth or another income stream so that you can help pay off those loans or the, that income because debt I think is one of the hardest things and I honestly from the stuff that I've read, most people are in debt. If you're watching this, you probably have debt, whether it's your car loan, your credit card payments, a student loan, your mortgage, obviously it's a, kind of a different type of debt, but a lot of people are in debt. And so I got on a little bit of tangent there, but the key for tip number six is to believe that you can be wealthy. I believe you can be wealthy. I believe I can be wealthy. I believe anybody can be wealthy. Tip number seven is to invest in yourself. This means reading books, taking classes, doing things on the weekends or in the evenings that advance or improve yourself. It means not binge watching Stranger Things, which I have done. It means not binge watching Narcos, which I have done. It means get, getting rid of the NFL Sunday where you're watching NFL for the whole day on Sunday, which I have done. So I've made a lot of mistakes in this category, but if you really want to follow the path of some of the most successful millionaires, they read a lot, they spend their time learning from others and improving their, their own life. And by reading and doing that kind of thing, you're gonna figure out other things you, that you like, you're gonna get better at your job, you might even figure out how to run a business on your own. Their tip number eight is to ditch the steady paycheck. This goes back to tip number one, where having a one salary at one job 
it's going to be hard to get to be a millionaire by the time you're 30, let alone 40 or 50. They found in this article that most 30 year olds who were millionaires started their own businesses. So this is just a kind of a wake up call that if you think that just saving and investing some of your paycheck from your normal job is going to make you a millionaire by the time you're 30, it's probably not. So start thinking of ways that you can start your own business. There's millions of different types of jobs that you can do and with the new online sharing economy world, the craziness that we're living in, you can start a business for cheap from your home with a simple computer. What I did was I started sharing my knowledge. I shared my knowledge online, on places like YouTube, on my blog, and that turned into creating online courses that I could charge for. And the only way that was successful is because I really cared about creating amazing content and helping other people. I couldn't have done this if the goal was to make a lot of money. I just wanted to do this because I thought it was fun, so I started creating courses just because it was interesting to me, and the fact that the money kind of followed is just lucky, honestly. And I just stuck with it and it grew and it grew and it grew. So I know this is a tough one because it's kind of a big deal to feel like, well, if I'm gonna be a millionaire, then I gotta start my own business. But it's the honest truth that most people who become millionaires have started their own businesses. Tip number nine is to set goals and visualize them. I love this one. In my office, I have a whiteboard that has my to-do list and long-term goals. And as part of my business, every year I write down a recap of the previous year and how I did with my goals. And then I set goals for the next year. And even this year, I looked at my goals frequently throughout the year to see how was I achieving those goals. They talk all about SMART goals and that basically means specific, measurable. You gotta find goals that have some tangibility to it. They have to be tangible. It can't just be, oh, I wanna be rich. That's not a good goal. A goal is I wanna make or increase my income this year by 10% or I wanna start a side business that brings in an extra $1,000 per month by the end of in six months or whatever it is. Having a tangible goal like that with numbers and visualizing it is one way to achieve your goals better. One of the people that I follow and really admire is Pat Flynn. And what he does is he'll literally like print out a photo of his dream car and post it right by his computer so that every day he sees it, he visualizes it, and he does work to achieve that goal. So for you, start thinking about your goals, write them down. Writing down goals is one way to better achieve them. Research has shown that. And start thinking about how your short-term goals build up to achieve your long-term goals. Their tip number 10 is to start hanging out with people that you admire. This is the one tip from their list where I was kind of like, I don't know if I want to follow this tip because basically what they're saying in this article is that rich people hang out with rich people or basically people hang out with other people in the same socioeconomic status. So if you wanna become rich, you have to hang out with rich people. But for me, I don't like this idea of well, I just wanna hang out with rich people because that will help me become rich. I just wanna hang out with people who I like. And if they aren't millionaires, then that's completely fine. So I wouldn't want people to not hang out with me because of my economic status. So this is the one tip where I'm not even gonna dive deeper into it. I just felt like it was a little off. So let's move on to tip number 11, which is to shoot for 10 million, not 1 million. And I actually really like this one because 1 million in our day and age is probably not enough to live the rest of your life, especially if you have a family and especially if you live in an urban area like Los Angeles, where I live, or places like San Francisco, where I used to live, or many of the urban areas in and around the United States. Yes, it's possible to live on a million dollars if you live simply, which I admire people who can do that. But if your goal is 1 million, why not shoot for 10 million? Personally, I tend to be more conservative with my goals. So 1 million, even though in my mindset I might be thinking, oh, well, beyond 1 million, there's 2 million or 10 million, and I can't achieve that potentially. But initially, 
I think of 1 million, that's the goal I have to, to set. So I tend to be conservative like that with anything I do, my monthly income goals, my savings goals, how fast I used to pay off debt. And then if I got more money or paid off more debt in the month, then it was kind of like a bonus. But what they're saying is to not be conservative, to shoot for the stars. And I like this, and this is something that I think I need to work on most. So if you're still watching this video, it probably means that you were at least a little bit interested in the video, so I appreciate that. If you have thoughts, please leave a comment down below with what you think of these tips. Check out the articles that I linked to below. If you want, you can read more what Business Insider said about these 11 tips. Like, share, subscribe if you're interested in this kind of stuff, and if there's other videos that you think I should make, about any topics related to personal finance, send me a message or shoot a comment below and ask me to make the video. I, I love sharing my own personal feelings and thoughts about money because it's something that in our world today, money is kind of a secret. No one knows how much the other people are making. No one knows what status we're at. And if we all knew each other's status a little bit better, we could help each other. We could help each other make more money. We could help each other get out of debt. We can help each other in all kinds of ways. So I'm very pro-financial transparency. And sometimes it wigs people out. I don't know if people say that anymore, wigs. But it, sometimes people are a little bit off-put by me sharing my income or sharing some numbers or sharing my even my thoughts about how to become a millionaire by the age of 30 because they think I have no reason or I shouldn't be sharing my thoughts because I'm not a millionaire when I'm 30. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and I just remind you to shoot for the stars, follow some of these tips and even if it's not a million dollars, if it's just an extra $10,000, set that goal, focus on it and I believe you can achieve it. Have a great day.